Hello everyone, my name is Rich Moscoso, Senior Field Applications Engineer for Aver Pro AV. And today I'd like to discuss uh, Visco over IP verification. Uh, so a lot of times there's third party uh, controllers uh, out there on the market and they're, you're hooking them up and you're creating a touch panel and you're pressing a button and for some reason the controls are not working for one of our PTZ cameras or our auto tracking cameras. Um, it can be a bit confusing because uh, you've look, been looking at code all day and whatnot. So just to, to try to help you navigate that, we just want to do a couple verifications, right? Uh, some steps in order to, uh, to verify that the camera itself can accept the, uh, the Visco over IP commands. Um, I can be reached at rich.moscoso at aver.com should you have any additional questions. Uh, but in today's topic, we are discussing Visco over IP. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind for the Aver Pro AV cameras when we're discussing um, Visco over IP. It is using the UDP protocol. And there are some important ports uh, that need to be open on the network. But before we get into it, it's a really good idea to visit our averusa.com website. Uh, once you go there, uh, you should see these tiles kind of floating by and sliding around. You want to go to the one that's labeled Pro AV. So once you uh, select Pro AV, it'll bring you to the Pro AV website. And up here at the top, you can just select support. Uh, and this support website, uh, there's plenty of quick start how-to videos. Uh, regarding our TR530, 530 Plus cameras, uh, the new AI cameras as far as, you know, setting up effect, effective tracking, or if you have a question about NDI. Uh, also, we have videos showing our PTZ cameras as well as our CL01 camera controller. This is a really good guided tour that kind of walks you through the steps on how to set up your cameras and control them from the CL01 uh, with Visco over IP. Um, but specifically, just uh, for this video, select download, and you will have, and if you scroll down to control codes, this is where you will find the control codes for each of the, of the cameras. So like our, our TR311, 311HN, or the TR313V2, PTZ, as well as our TR530s. Also note that the cameras can accept uh, CGI commands. It is a, it is a subset of the uh, Visco over IP, but just know that you can also send some commands via CGI or HTTP strings. Um, so before I leave here, it's also this top document, uh, the Aver Pro AV PTZ Visco over IP UDP and RS-232 guide. This is really handy to have because it walks you through uh, the topic we're discussing today. So one of the first things I'm going to recommend is that you download this Hercules software. Uh, it can be found here. Just click on here and it takes you right there. I'm going to allow the cookies. So you download that. But as of late, I did find a newer piece of software called Packet Sender. So this guy is my new favorite. Uh, the reason why um, not only can I put in commands and ASCII and hex and whatnot, but I can also save those, right? So I can save these commands and, and give them names, whereas in Hercules you cannot. Um, so Hercules is good for, you know, testing out serial control and then UDP. Um, Packet Sender is is. is is better in my mind because I can I can then save that information for the next time I'm going to come across this camera or any of our Aver Pro AV cameras. So as mentioned, um, there are some important control ports. So like 52381, you'll notice uh, is the port that we need to have available and open and used when sending command strings. Uh, CGI port 80, and then RS. Our TSP port 554. So this is just for streaming, really, uh, for the um, for the video to get to say a touch panel. 
So once you download and install it, uh, you will be able to, you know, basically copy and paste from the um, control guide uh, the command strings that you're interested in sending to the camera. So uh, just before we continue, so just um, just note that the as far as the command string, right, the red part, there is a header. It's an it's a Visco over IP packet header, and then the blue part. Uh, of this string is the visca command so just keep that in mind as we're discussing visca over ip also note you know setters and getters uh you know if you're going to set something right just make sure you are using the appropriate information in the string and then if you're getting information or an inquiry make sure that that header also has that information in there as well in that octet. A little more information. This is also in the in the manual itself for the uh, Visco over IP control. All right. So let's say, for example, we want to send a. We're having. We have a PTZ camera on the network. You have a say a Crestron or Extron controller. You're sending commands from there, but they're not working. So uh, one thing you can do is you download. Right, the um, the packet sender software, and what you can do is then, you know, up here you can actually put in the ASCII and, and the hex. Actually, once you put in the ASCII, it'll fill in the hex and vice versa. Uh, create the, you know, put in the IP address of that camera. Fifty-two three eighty-one is the port, and it is a UDP protocol. So you can actually save it, right? Or just send the command if you're trying to figure out which which commands you're gonna be using. Uh, since I've saved them, so you'll see here, where am I at? So, so right here, for instance, is this camera power off command, right? So this is a string and I wanna test this, right? I wanna test that this is actually getting to the camera. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and send this command to the PTZ310 camera. Uh, the PTZ310 camera is that gray one on the far right of that image. So I'm going to say power off. I'm going to send that. And what you see is actually that camera automatically goes to a preset because that's the way I have it set up and configured in, in the camera. Um, there's actually a setting for power off and power on. You know, if you want that camera to go to a certain preset on power off or power on. So this is good. That works. Uh, next, I'm going to send a power on command. This one here. The only difference is it's going from a three to a two. I'm going to go ahead and send that command. You'll notice the LED blinked once. That's good information to have because that tells me, hey, the camera received something. Um, and now what it's doing, it's actually going through its power up routine. And this takes roughly a minute, minute and a half for it to come back. So we know this is working with Visco over IP. So this is a really good test to do, especially if you're doing uh, programming and it's just not working from the programming side of things. All right, so I just demonstrated the power off, power on. You could also do a recall preset if you wanted to. Just, again, look through the documentation for the command string to recall presets, uh, and it should work. If it doesn't work, right, uh, what could be an issue? So one of the first things you want to do is actually uh, type in the IP address of that camera in a Chrome browser and log into the camera. and this is a really good test because it will tell us if the CGI port 80 is open and if the RTSP port 554 is open. Also, when you do the camera control commands, you know, left, right, up, down, zoom in, zoom out, that will also tell us about port 52381, that that's actually available and working. So as mentioned, if the commands do not work, you know, check the ports. Um, a lot of times the, the network that you're on is a closed network. It's an AV network uh, tied specifically to that space or to that room. But there are some instances where you may have to go through a switch or two uh, 
to gain access to the cameras. So, so check the ports, make sure they're open. Uh, check the control from the web UI as mentioned. Uh, check your cables, right? Check the Cat5 cable that's uh, connected to the PoE Plus RJ45 connection on the camera. So you definitely want to make sure that you're connected to the port that's labeled PoE Plus. There have been instances where individuals have plugged it into the RS422 thinking that's, I mean, it is a control, but it's not control over network. It's actually a, a whole other physical cable that needs to be installed. So just make sure you're still, you're connected to this PoE Plus. Uh, check your cable runs and connections, right? Make sure those cables are made properly. Uh, you know, Bixi standards, uh, 568B. Uh, there's no kinks in the cable or cuts or anything like that. And then also, you know, if you're able to, you know, run the cables through a cable tester and just verify everything's looking good as far as that physical hardware. So we'll move on to the TR530. Uh, this guy's a little different in the sense that there's a, there's a couple more things that need to be checked in order to verify the functionality for the TR530 or the TR530+. plus. So one of the first things you want to do is actually gain access to the web UI of the camera. Uh, so the camera's on the network. You're going to, again, IP address of the camera in a Chrome browser. Uh, once you get in, you're going to go to advanced setting and verify that the Visca over IP uh, selection has been enabled. Uh, by default from the factory, it is disabled. So you have to make sure this is enabled. Uh, this is how the Visca commands will work with this camera so so that's point number one another point is that although you may have the the ability to actually send a power off command with visca over ip uh, the power on command will not work with visca over ip um, that only works as far as power on will only work with the rs232 or 422 connection unfortunately so in our example, what I'll do is I'll either do a recall a preset or I'll turn tracking on or I'll turn tracking off. So as mentioned before, I have saved the commands for the TR530 camera. So here's one labeled preset number one. There's one called tracking off So I'll and tracking on. I'll actually highlight that. Uh, let me do this. So it's the TR530 camera that I have is actually located on the upper right of that shelf. So above the PTZ310 camera. So I'm going to go ahead and send this uh, tracking on command. And what we should see is that the blue LED on that camera should start to blink every two seconds. Uh, and that tells me that the auto tracking has been enabled for that camera. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, next command I'm going to send is camera tracking off. I'm going to hit send. And what you'll notice is that blue LED has now stopped blinking. Uh, so that tells me uh, the command string is, is working. I can likewise, I can say go to preset six and the actual camera might be hard to see, went to preset six and then I'm going to go ahead and send it to preset one. And that actually moved to preset one. So this is all working as it should. All right, so what happens if the commands do not work? Uh, again, make sure that the VSCO over IP has been enabled uh, through the web UI. Uh, check those ports that, you're, that you are using 52381, right, for the control. And just like before, just verify those cables uh, and preferably with a cable tester, but just also do a, a visual of those cameras, right? Like the camera or the cable end should look like this, right? 568B, properly crimped. Make sure, you know, I've seen some instances where the tabs on the, on the uh, network cables are like re either really used or, or even broken off. So we don't want to see a loose connection anywhere.
So that's it. Just a really quick video uh, on what to check for when uh, when when using you know third-party uh, remote controllers with Visco over IP using UDP. Thank you and good luck.